So we just saw how we can use Perlin noise, Ken Perlin's totally classic early 80s algorithm that I should have mentioned is still used today, like Minecraft uses that as a way of generating um, the terrain that you see. Um, but let's then apply this to creating realistic wave-like structures in code using, uh, and this is something we call Perlin motion. Um, now, I don't want to code this whole example for you because I think it's um, a, a little much, but let's run this so you can see it. And then I'll walk you through kind of how this works. Um, so this is these are these Perlin uh, motion waves that look really, really nice. And I'm just going to scoot this over. We can see it kind of in the background here. Um, I'm going to shrink this a little bit. There we go. OK. So uh, we've got some similar variables here that we're using, just like in um, our Perlin noise example. Uh, so we've got an increment. Um, in the y direction, that's up and down, but we also have a time increment. And um, the noise function lets us do two dimensions like last time, so that gives us a two dimensional thing, or three dimensions. And we can think of the third dimension as time. So you're almost thinking about that like um, cloud like image being then repeated over and over through time. And it's shifting not only evenly in it, this is so trippy, it's not just shifting evenly in the two dimensional plane but also each pixel is shifting evenly through time. And that's what gives us this really sweet, super um, looking wave kind of function here. Um, and of course, this is an animation, uh, but we've got our begin shape and end shape here. And then for each, each frame of the animation, we reset this Y offset. Um, and then we create a series of points in the X direction. So those are evenly spaced and our Y points are what changes based on the Perlin noise. So Y is again using this here to kind of um, remember that noise gives us a value between zero and one. So now we're scaling it between zero and height, drawing a vertex, updating the Y offset. So each point then gives us this kind of nice evenness. And then each frame we update the time offset. So this then becomes this almost like three-dimensional time-based Perlin noise, which is really pretty sweet. So this is getting a little ahead of ourselves in that we're not really doing animation yet. But again, you might think about ways of potentially utilizing this idea to generate um, still images, um, to make waves or mountains or you know whatever you could think of um, that would benefit from this kind of smoothness of Perlin noise. Um, oh, we can also, again, try changing these values and see how that changes it. So, you know, instead of 0.5, I make it 0.1, and we get much more gentle waves. We could even go down further, not really seeing much here. And now that's almost more like an audio waveform or something. Um, we could try, let's see, what was our preset? Let's go back to it, 0.05. Um, our time increment, we could also try changing so we could make these move much more slowly. It's almost more like glacial movement or something or much quicker. Again, totally spazzy, crazy, depends on what we want. So I just wanted to show you this because it's really cool. Try playing with it. If you could think of a way to incorporate it into making still images, that's super rad, but no sweat. I just wanted to kind of show you this example. In the last example I have for you, we're going to talk about cryptographically secure random numbers, which is another topic kind of close to my heart.